This metal chain is suspended from its two ends and hangs under its own weight. The chain takes the shape of a catenary, which is a cosine hyperbolic. We put the origin of the coordinate system at the low point in the chain, and then y of x equals cosh bx divided by b. The forces on this piece of chain are the downward tension from its lower neighboring piece of chain and the upward tension from its higher neighboring piece of chain and the downward weight of this piece of chain. This segment has a differential length ds. The differential change in height of the string is dy and the horizontal change is dx with its left end located at x and its right end located at x plus dx. Here is the free body diagram. The net force on each piece of string is zero. If it were not zero, then each piece would be moving. The left end of the string makes angle alpha with the horizontal, and the right end of the string makes angle theta with the horizontal. The horizontal tension is constant throughout the string, but there is a change in the tilt of the string. The sum of y tensions is Fy net equals plus T sine theta minus T sine alpha equals T times sine of theta minus sine of alpha, but for small angles, as shown in the appendix, sine theta is about the same thing as tan theta, which is rise over run equals dy over dx equals f prime. So we can replace sine with a derivative f prime. We then have the net y force equals the tension t sine of theta, which is f prime at x plus dx, minus sine of alpha, which is f prime at x. The string has a linear mass density lambda that is constant and is given in kilograms per meter. The mass of the differential segment is dm equals lambda ds, where ds is the differential segment. Using a Pythagorean theorem, we write ds equals the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. We factor out a dx squared and then take the dx out of the square root. This dy dx is y prime to have dx multiplied by the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. The weight of this tiny piece of string is dw equals lambda g ds. The sum of the vertical forces is zero in each segment of the string, so we have fy net equals zero equals tension t multiplied by f prime at x plus dx minus f prime at x minus lambda g ds. And substituting in ds, we get this. Dividing by dx gives tension t times f prime at x plus dx minus f prime at x divided by dx equals lambda g times the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. On the left, the quantity in brackets is the definition of the second derivative. So we have y double prime equals b times the square root of 1 plus y prime squared, where the constant b equals the linear mass density multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity divided by the magnitude of the tension t. The solution to this equation is y of x equals cosh bx all divided by b, which gives y prime equals sine hyperbolic bx and y double prime equals b cosine hyperbolic of bx. y prime squared is then sine hyperbolic squared of bx and y double prime squared is b squared cosh squared b of x. The square of this y double prime equation is y double prime squared equals b squared times 1 plus y prime squared, or b squared cosh squared equals b squared times 1 plus sine hyperbolic squared. After canceling b squared, we are left with the well-known identity cosh squared equals 1 plus cinch squared. So we conclude that y of x equals cosh bx over b is the solution to the y double prime equation. 
This string is hanging as a catenary. Now we know that the net force on each piece of string is zero. Otherwise that piece of string would be moving. If we flip the catenary upside down, then we have an arch. An arch is built out of individual bricks, shaped just right on each end. The net force on each brick is zero. The forces on this brick are two normal forces acting at these angles and the downward weight of the block. These three force vectors add up to zero. Through the normal forces, the weight of this block is transferred sideways to the two neighboring blocks. And in the same way, the weight is transferred sideways to the next two blocks, and so on. This arch will support a lot of weight above it, while this one will not. If you extend the arch in this direction, then you have a vault. If you rotate the arch, then you have a dome. Domes are often spheres. Some arches are parabolas. This arch is placed outside the building and is called a flying buttress. These enable the interior of the building to be very tall and hollow as less support is within the interior. Here are some intersecting arches. <laughs> 